questions are getting revved up. We're live on the air. Live on the air. What's up, people? Welcome what up? back. <laughs> what up? Live from the Big Daddy Gun Studio. I am Hank Strange. I am joined by Mr. Walter Keller of Safety Harbor Firearms. What's up, Walter? Another day, another uh, another nickel. Yeah, you know, we gotta make more guns. Gotta make the guns. <laughs> yeah, sell some more shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also joined by my friend Steve from 904 Outdoors. What's up, Steve? What's up, man? What's going on? Another hot day in Florida. Yeah. Oh, holy. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like white hot. It looked like Mars outside. Yeah. Luckily, Today. this morning it, it rained at the shop, so it wasn't too bad. So, oh, okay. yeah, it rained a little bit here too. Yeah, so uh, you know, I don't know how the weather is for the rest of you guys. You know, we're we're here complaining when it's hot. I don't know how it is in the rest of the country. I'm assuming it's hotter in the rest of the country. So you guys can let us know, like, how is the, uh, you know, how's the weather in your neighborhood? Are, are they still melting um, garbage can lids in Arizona? Is that what it is? Or? <laughs> Yeah, it's really hot out there. I mean, you know, in lots of different places. So so tonight, what we want to talk about is we want to talk about the Supreme Court burying their heads in the sand. That's right. The Supreme Court is refusing to hear anything that has to do with the Second Amendment. So we're going to talk about that, as well as a district attorney in New York says that only ISIS would support concealed carry reciprocity. <laughs> And all, all, New York. <laughs> it should well, be a, only a communist would uh, not support Second Amendment. Right? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we're going to talk about all those things. We're going to read some articles for anyone who's out there listening to this, watching. Please feel free to hit us up with your questions, comments, and all that kind of stuff. Check out, you know, go if you haven't heard about th this news, check it out and uh, read up on it because we're about to get real deep into it here in a minute. Uh, first, I'm going to find out, we, we should have Derek 50% Tactical joining us uh, soon here. He should be joining us soon. Hopefully, his internet and everything's working where he's at. So, until we do that, Steve, what's going on with you, man? Any new videos on 904 Outdoors? Uh, actually, today we just posted the, uh, the Franklin Army Binary Firing System video. Okay. Uh, that thing ran almost flawlessly. It had a couple little hiccups, but nothing major. I think we're, we're using cheap, like, Tula ammo or tool ammo, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And uh, it it chews through it pretty easily, but once in a while you have a little hiccup, so it's no big deal. Okay. Yeah. What? Um, so what gun did you put it in? Uh, it's just a uh, it's a GPI lower AR-15, 5.56. Uh, it's a hardened arms upper. Okay. And it, it works pretty good. Okay. Did you have any issues with install? Uh, yes. <laughs> The, uh, the little IDS, the little IDS spring. I uh, I broke the first one. Had to had to get another one for it. But yeah, um, they, that, usually, they usually put a few in the packaging, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had two of them, so I yeah. had to search for that little thing in there. Yeah, that's the one thing with that system. It's not a cassette style, which makes it a little bit more flexible. They say. So, but you can. <laughs> I wound up that thing came apart many times of me moving it through I, different guns but it's you know once you figure it out it's not really that difficult to deal with i installed mine with the uh, the knss anti-roll pins also and uh they like to cut that spring whenever you push them through okay uh, i figured out how to uh, rotate those just right where it doesn't break that spring all right cool cool walter what's going on in your world man what are you what are you guys building in the shop oh let's see oh kind of the normal stuff building uppers um Machining parts, um, sweating. Okay. Um, what working, else? On, working on some Sten guns. Well, we had a, a shipment of Sten gun barrels show up today. Okay, which cool. Is, which is good. We've got to do some finished machine work on those, but um, just the normal stuff. Um, wondering where things are at and why things aren't here. And okay, are you still? Are you still getting uh, things sorted out since you came back from vacation? You came back from vacation last like a week ago. Yeah, it's been a week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Um. Yeah. Things are getting back to order. I mean, that things things weren't out of order. Too bad, but you know, okay. just uh, kind of thinking about what's coming up here. It's not very. You know, it's only half a year to a shot show, so I gotta get some new stuff. <laughs> only six months. <laughs> <laughs> only six months. Yeah. Yeah. We're already back on shot show again, huh? Well. Yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I understand. So we're going to be working on some new stocks. Uh, we're working on those 308 stocks, the Kess ones, you know, for a make small little 308s and that okay. 50 cal. Yeah, because um, we're doing a 50 cal giveaway coming up just right. in case any like people out there think we forgot. We didn't forget about it. No, no. Um, 50 some, cal giveaway is coming up. Right, right. And some of the parts we're working on is some of that. So, um, And then there's always a barrel issue, which continues on, but right. I'm hopefully going to work. I got to I got to do some more work on that. So, um, normal day at the shop. <laughs> cool. I you know, it's it probably I wish my seemed, shop was that busy. Yeah, exactly. You know, it probably seems boring <laughs> for you. I'm sure that folks out there are like, man, I love to work in a gun shop. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all day. It's always the grass is always greener, right? Yeah, there's there's moments of sheer terror, and then there's most of the time it's just sheer boredom. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yeah. when I test fire a new gun or something like that. But yeah. Um, Aside from that, you know, just okay. another day. But we got lots of guns to shoot this weekend, so we got to get on it. Yeah, we are going to be shooting stuff this weekend. So, all right, let's jump into some of this new okay. stuff here. So, this article, I'm going to be reading this from the uh, Truth About Guns. They had this uh, article up today, and it's called, uh, the title of it is Quote of the Day, ISIS Supports Concealed Carry Reciprocity. It would be completely legal for a person to bring a loaded gun or guns in New York as long as it was legal to possess them in the person's home state. A guy from Idaho where there's um, no permitting requirement whatsoever could carry his gun into New York City loaded into Times Square. District Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr., Manhattan prosecutor, um, talking about gun law reciprocity. He says the bill supported by ISIS, I'm sure. <laughs> So basically, like in, in his mind, only ISIS would support this because uh, the rest of us all around the country who, you know, who we go out, we get CCW licenses and we carry, we go through all the background checks, fingerprinting, you know, all that kind of stuff. We are not good enough for New York City, apparently. We're not secure enough. And <sighs> only ISIS would be happy about reciprocity according to this guy i don't know that what makes no sense because isis would be happy for everyone else to protect themselves <laughs> against yeah, isis and it's, yeah it's so stupid i mean it's it's the kind of thing that only a super liberal district attorney in new york city or california or some other crazy place like that maybe miami or something would would say such a crazy thing like why would isis be happy that there's people who have gone through background checks and training and are legally armed in New York City and, and able to fight back should they decide to strike in New York City? Why would they be happy about that? Uh, there, there's, some, there's some things I can't, I don't have an answer for how some people think. <laughs> it's almost as bad as saying that, um, that Donald Trump was um, trying, this whole thing with the Russians and Donald Trump the election. You think the Russians would want Hillary Clinton because she's a leftist, right? Not Donald Trump because he's a more of a hawk. I could, I can't figure it out. I don't know. Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing. It's like if it's so, uh, if it, if they're so scared of uh, concealed carry, why are things like in Chicago still a cluster? You know what? I mean. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that always amazes me about uh, these kind of politicians that are against the Second Amendment are against guns. I'm pretty sure this district attorney has a, uh, a He set has of, a carry permit. Yeah, or a, a, you know, or some or contingent. Yeah, exactly. Some contingent of yeah. NYPD is guarding him every day. You know, I don't understand why these guys feel like first of all criminals, criminals. Let's just forget about ISIS. You know, criminals <laughs> by the nature of what they are being criminals don't give a crap about what laws and what you can have someplace yeah. and what you can't have and so all these things that he's saying he hasn't made new york city any safer like you just said a place isn't like in chicago they're not any safer there's lots of places around the country in la for example where you know they're they're coming down um pretty hard on legal uh, gun ownership. We'll, we'll talk about that in regards to the Supreme Court in a minute. But in these places, the criminals don't care what laws we put into place. You know, they don't care about our safe zones, no gun zones, or any of that kind of stuff. Why, if the criminals, if the if your normal, regular day, run of the mill criminal, 
doesn't uh-huh. care, why would your super ISIS terrorist give a crap? <laughs> well, well, first thing, they're not even going to worry about the gun. They're just going to run a car, run you over with a car, or blow a bomb up, one or the other. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. who needs a gun, right? I mean, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I haven't been in New York City for a long time. I did grow up in New York City, but I'm I'm sure that New York City is not 100% safe with all the laws that these guys have put into effect there. I'm quite sure too. So, um, yeah. and, never, and you can't even have a slingshot in New York City. So, what's that <laughs> no. tell you? you no, know? you can't have pepper spray. There's a whole bunch of things. You know, I met Lola when she moved. She she grew up in Maryland, and she came to New York City to finish getting her pharmacy degree. And, you know, that was her first time in New York City. And she was obviously, like a lot of people who come to New York City for the first time, she was worried about her safety and security. And she asked the people at at her school, like, what can I do to protect myself? And they were like, yeah, you can't have pepper spray. (laughs) You can't can't have a knife. You can't carry anything, you know. No, you can't have anything to protect yourself. So basically, just like you know, lay down your life to these guys and and let them have their way with you and do whatever they want. And that's the same thing that these guys are proposing for New York City, where, I mean, you know, this is like the number one target. People, People are still trying to target New York City, right? Terrorists are still trying to target New York City. I think it would help for people from around the country as well as in New York City to be like good guys there to be able to defend themselves outside of course of like the police because pretty much in New York City to to have a, a permit to conceal carry you either have to be a police officer or someone who is really wealthy powerful and well connected or bribe people like we've seen you know we've seen cases of where people had to bribe these guys in order to get the permits well that's the way it works in those type of uh, bureaucracies, you know. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking at the article right now, kind of reading through it. Yeah. And, yeah. What uh, do you think about this, Steve? You ever been to New York City? I have, unfortunately. <laughs> how, how, when's, when's the last time you were there? Uh, about oh six, oh seven. Um, I used okay. to be a uh, over the road truck driver. Uh oh. Uh, for, for a few years and. Uh, yeah, one of the reasons I got out of it, you can't protect yourself. I mean, you cross state lines and you can't carry a firearm with you. You can't have anything or something in the, in the truck with you. But I mean, if somebody wants to attack you, they're going to attack you. And, you know, these vulnerable areas like you know, New York City, New Jersey, all the worst places, you know. Yeah. A lot, a lot of truck drivers carry uh, flare guns. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean a lot with flare guns. Because it's, a signaling, I mean, it's not a firearm, it's a signaling device. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not legal in New York City. <laughs> right, well, it might be. It might yeah. be. I mean, what's your life worth? I don't know. It's <laughs> yeah. you know that's that's the crazy thing. And like you know, there's um there's another article here that I'm reading on this. Speaking to radio host John Casimitadis, I probably said that wrong. Uh, on AM 970 in New York, Vance argued that concealed carry reciprocity act introduced earlier this year would only put New York City at risk of violence. If that bill passes, I believe the safety and the greater safety we have achieved will be at risk, he said. Oh, so what they have, they're safe already? Really? Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I I still have family and friends that live in New York City, and I don't know anyone who feels safer. Well, it depends where you live in New York City now. If you live in and Forest Hills in the gardens, like my sister used to live. Yeah, you're pretty pretty safe. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know when she lived in, in Forest Hills. It's not safe there. Uh, they still yeah. have a house there, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Um, they don't live there right now, but they have a house there. But, yeah. um, you know, that's why I don't live there. That's why I can't live there or California or any of the other places. Right. You know, it's just, it's not my, uh, but if, if, I guess some people don't have a choice, so they have to be, do what they can do. Yeah, I don't think in general New Yorkers feel safe. There's lots of, you know, New Yorkers still have to get on the subway, other public transportation. Um, there's obviously, obviously there are some neighborhoods that are safer than others or that are, I don't know, better patrolled or whatever it is. Right, or right. just, you know, there's different communities and things that are going on. But I think there's still plenty of crime, violence, you know. Uh, drug dealing and all kinds of other, uh, you know, horrible stuff going on in New York City. And 
I mean, it's, it's still easy in New York to get anything you want. I tell people this all the time, you know, in New York City, you can get any gun, any weapon. You know, you people think that I'm just making that up, but you can get anything. But that's in New illegal. York. <laughs> yeah, but that being it, being illegal doesn't stop it. I mean, you can just search. Like in New York City, there's guys that have tigers and lions in their apartments oh, yeah. and all kinds of stuff that you would think like, how the hell does that happen? Well, well, how much money you have? It's all or, an, or an alligator? But <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of crazy things that are going on in New York City. You know, there's still there's still slavery. There's still, uh, you know, sexual slavery. All kinds of horrible things. We, we you could just pull up the news in New York City and you see all these things going on, including like one one of my things is that only the bad guys and cops in New York City can can have easy access to guns. Even if you're wealthy or famous, like uh, John Stossel, famously he tried to get a, a permit to carry concealed and he was denied even though they were talking John Stossel he's been threatened and all yeah. that kind of stuff you know so he couldn't get one the cops of course if you're a police officer you can you can um, you can carry at all times and then Trump the criminals yeah Trump got one I mean you know but he's got billions yeah that's Trump you know and I'm sure he had that even back when he was a Democrat in New York City so <laughs> you know I I just, I think it's, I think it's insane. And, and and if you look at the news in New York City, we could pull up New York City news, and you would see there's all kinds of corruption. Yeah, you know, the police officers, the the ones who are getting access to these guns, in some cases, I'm not trying to like knock them. There's lots of good police officers out there, in, including right, right. in New York City. But you see, there's there's corruption and all kinds of things. You know, there was a case in the news, um, I think it was last year, with police officers that were selling guns. You know, so I, I just don't really get what this guy's trying to say and what fantasy world he's living in in New York City that they think that they're safe from these things. And then, like you said, Walter, what's going to stop someone from just driving a semi down, you know, 42nd Street, Times Square? Just like it happened in Times Square just recently. Yeah. You know, so, he purposely he purposely did a U-turn and ran people over. It's like, you know, how are you going to stop that? You're gonna stop cars from the city? Oh, okay. That'll yeah. be real. That'll be real productive. Yeah, we can just go back in the news. I mean, right now I'm I'm here doing this. So, but I, I can. There's just so many things in the news that you can look at from New York City. They just what was it like? They just found a couple hundred illegal guns. <laughs> wow. You know, they did some kind of sting. Uh, this was a few months ago. We can go on and on and on. I think it's ridiculous. I think that, and then really the thing about this is what is New York City saying about the rest of the country? Uh, you know, are they saying that New York City is like a different, better utopia, a better America, and then the rest of us, we're just all like, Bumpkins. you know, yeah, our our yeah, state Bumpkins. governments and all that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're we're all there's nothing about us that's safe. Which I, I that's just like this is probably before your time, Hank. But when concealed carry started in Florida, Florida was going to be the Wild West. That's what was going to happen. All hell was going to break loose because we mm -hmm. had concealed carry, and just right. the opposite happened. You know, I'm still waiting for open to carry to come to Florida. What's that? I'm still waiting for open to carry to come to Florida. Oh, oh, uh. You know, <laughs> I like it, but I think some folks, you know, like usual, they'll be walking they around with use it. 12 inch long barrel 44 mag yeah. just because. <laughs> and, you know, you could be standing in line at McDonald's and somebody could go for that gun. You never know. It's like, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. It's a weird, that's a I weird. I kind of like carrying, con I like carrying concealed just because, you know, you never know who has a weapon or who does not right, or right, who right, could right. save the day. You know? It's a mutual assured, mutual assured destruction. That's what kept us safe with the Russians, you know. Yeah. You nuke me, I'll nuke you. I mean, obviously, obviously, yep. we, you know, there's still issues and places in Florida that you that you have problems. But for the most part, I feel, you know, I feel completely different here in Florida than I do, than I did when I was in New York. So, yeah. Well, unfortunately, New York State, which most normal people live in, has to suffer with New York City, where all the leftists live, with these. Um, ideas of uh that they have and uh, like california and the major cities dictate to the small towns um everything yeah so here here's a here's an article i just pulled up from the new york post 
This was March 8th, 2017. Massive gun bust is biggest in Brooklyn history, say authorities. Brooklyn cops broke up a huge Virginia-based weapon smuggling outfit and seized 217 weapons. The biggest firearms bust in the borough's history, authorities said Wednesday. Gun runners were caught on tape boasting about the Commonwealth's weaker gun laws that allowed them to easily assemble their cache of weapons, which they sold up north, according to police and prosecutors. You know, so now, I mean, this is part of the reason why, like, New York City wants the rest of us not to, to be able to have access to guns, you know, because they say that people are, like, you know, going, doing these, like, out-of-state straw purchase things. They go into other states buying guns bringing them to New York City and then doing all kinds of terrible things. I think that like their solution, it's almost like if you look at what's happening with the cafe standard with cars, I think, right? Cars are getting more and more expensive and got all kinds of crazy crap in there because of the rules that California has that the rest of the country has to go against. And they think that makes some kind of sense. Meanwhile, in Florida, for example, which has a lot easier rules, but we still have the, you know, we still have the same cars. The cars really aren't any different. It's nice, clear skies in California. <laughs> it's still smog. Yeah. You know, so that doesn't, like, what I'm trying to say to you, that doesn't make any sense. And it's the same thing here with New York, where they're saying, hey, th we're having these problems because of the rest of the country. You all need to change. If you stop, then it's going to be safer here in New York City when I think it's really, you know, it's illegal there to do it, regardless of where people are getting things so that, from and bringing them into New York. Anytime you take something away, somebody finds a way to bring it in and sell it at a profit. I mean, look at yeah, the states. Yeah, you create a black market. Look at the states that don't have cigarette taxes. See, so you buy the cigarettes in the state that don't have any taxes, and you take them to Florida and sell them and make money. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, if, 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 if New York was like everybody else, instantly there'd be no more... I say uh, illegal demand, I guess, you know, right. like, except for the folks that just couldn't have one in, in the first place. Yeah. But. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. I don't think that New York's approach is going to make anyone. I, I really don't believe that anyone feels safer in New York. And their argument that they're trying to make here is the same kind of argument that they don't want this reciprocity. I think this is really the big issue, right? There was because of the shooting in Virginia of the congressman, um, someone in Congress tried to put up something where they said, okay, so all congressmen can be armed. You know, they wanted to make a special rule for them, which is kind of ridiculous. Then another guy said, well, okay, so let's get, um, let's get this reciprocity for, for DC so that people who are coming into DC from other places, that, that makes a little bit more sense. And then in general, we've been trying to push reciprocity across the whole country, right? So now across the, the rest of the country, people... In my opinion, and, and if you look at things, people feel safer than they do in these big cities that are led by liberals and, and people who want to take away guns from law-abiding citizens, right? They're really not doing anything about people who are committing crimes. And, and we're talking about, like, the, it's, it's funny that these same cities are also sanctuary cities in America, <laughs> right? So their, their solution, like, the rest of us are all safe for the most part. If you've got a CCW here in Florida, it goes to how many different states? I think it's like 30, 30 states. 36, I think. Yeah, 36, 36 states it reciprocates to. So we feel relatively, you know, compared to them, safe here in Florida. We go to other places. We can, uh, we can carry. The family and I, we were just on a road trip, and we were concealed carrying everywhere that we went. There was no issues or anything like that. What it is is that you're, you have something on you and you're prepared if things do go wrong. But their solution just keeps coming back to, you know what? We just have to like force everyone else to be like New York City and that's going to make things better. When New York City, L.A., um, you know, Chicago, Chicago these, yeah, the, yeah, New Orleans, these places are all like, the, you know, these are war zones. In certain parts of the city, they're... Yeah. Yeah. They're poop, they're poop holes. Right. And then basically, you know, when we when we push for things like that, their pushback is that we're siding with ISIS. You, we're helping because, out ISIS. It's your fault because you like guns. It's your yeah. fault. Yeah. You like freedom. Yeah. So it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's you know, really it's not crazy. my fault. Like I always say, go outside or go outside your house, front, uh, uh, Hank, and just stand around. Do you hear the you hear the you hear the the gunfire? 
No. no. Only when I'm make, only when I'm doing it. Or something like well, I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes you make the gunfire. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm the loudest person in my neighborhood, but oh, I do yeah. hear I do hear the other members of of my of my neighborhood. They are out there sometimes, actually quite often, you know, exercising their freedoms and you, shooting you know guns and stuff. My, and it doesn't my, bother me. You know where my dad lives? He lives out in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. But every once in a while, when you're there, you hear boom, 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 boom. Yeah. One direction, and boom, 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 over another direction. It's like, okay. Sound of freedom. Nothing's going through the trees above me, so I'm all right. Yeah, <laughs> it's the sound of freedom. You know, I've got, I've got absolutely uh, nothing against it. You know, um, th this is like such a weird thing, but it's the, it's the pushback that you always get from the people on the left that want to take guns from us. And they're always trying to compare us to ISIS. And only ISIS would be happy about this. And it's uh, nonsense. <laughs> you know? ISIS, ISIS disarms all the cities they go into. That's yeah. a fact. So yeah. they're, they're not happy about people having guns because the people in the cities don't like ISIS. Yeah, no, no, um, no one that wants to take away freedom from other people wants those people that they're going to go up against to be armed. Right, right, right. You know, the, the Nazis didn't want... Uh, Jewish people to be armed when they decided they were going to cart them off to concentration camps. Um, the Nazis didn't want anybody to be armed. Yeah. Ger German or, or Jews. Stalin disarmed everybody. Uh, my grandfather ended up in jail because of that. Yeah, look at Argentina. Well, everywhere you go. Yeah, you know, so... <laughs> Ask any socialist you happen to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going to take the guns away, so... Yeah. So now let's, um, let's, we can collude, we can bring these two things together, but let's go on to this. This is the other thing I wanted to talk about. Supreme Court turns down case in carrying guns in public. So from the Supreme Court on Monday declined to hear a Second Amendment challenge to a California law that places strict limits on carrying guns in public. As is their custom, the justices gave no reason for deciding um, deciding not to hear the case, the court has turned away numerous Second Amendment cases in recent years to the frustration of gun rights groups and some conservative justices. Justice Clarence Thomas, joined by Justice Neil Gorsuch, dissented. Um, the court's refusal to hear the case, Justice Thomas wrote, reflects a distressing trend, the treatment of the Second Amendment as a disfavored right. For those of us who work in marbled halls guarded constantly by a vigilant and dedicated police force, Justice Thomas wrote, the guarantees of the Second Amendment might seem antiquated and superfluous, but the framers made a clear choice. They reserved to all Americans the right to bear arms for self-defense. I do not think we should stand by idly while a state denies its citizens that right, particularly when their very lives may depend on it. So what do you guys what do you guys think about that? He's right. I don't know. There's not much more to say. It's you know. Yeah. yeah. He's a pretty sharp guy. Um, so um, this is this is pretty much what what happens all the time, right? Um, I mean, this has been going on for years. I, I guess this is this is what he's saying here. We can dig into it a little bit deeper. So when things come up for the First Amendment, Supreme Court's all over it as they should be. But it seems like when things come up related to the Second Amendment, they're like, wait a second, nobody wants to handle it. <laughs> right? Yeah, they, well, don't, they don't want to do anything to reinforce our Second Amendment rights in general. I mean, there are obviously justices like these two in particular, Thomas and Gorsuch, that, who was recently appointed by Trump. Right. Right? You know, that are, that are, that are what's that? Hopefully we get maybe two more. Get rid of a... Um, the old granny sweet pea, whatever her name is. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, the other one who's talking about maybe retiring too. Uh, I forget mm -hmm. his name, but. Um, and then, you know, the, but the, they, should, they should have term limits. For the Supreme Court? Yeah, they just, they just stay on for, you know, 20, 25 years. You know, oh, oh didn't, didn't she just recently say that she thinks they need to lessen the, the penalties for pedophilia and stuff? Who are we oh, talking wow. about? Justice, um, oh the old God. one, the old, the old lady. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's not. That's not. That's not good enough. We got to come up with just uh, this old lady. Yeah. Ginsburg. Ginsburg. Yeah. 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 Ginsburg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She said they need to lessen the penalties for, for a child, basically child molesters. 
or, or pedophilia or whatever, you know, it's like, what? Where are you coming from? You know, I mean, so let's see here. <laughs> so who, who was it that said that they're in favor of um, term limits for the Supreme Court? Was that you, Steve? Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Okay, so what's your, what's your argument that you're making with that one? Well, I mean, you know, they set one direction that they want to they want to take the government. Say if, if it's you know Democratic or Republican, they set one direction and then they keep it going that path, and you have no opinions on the other side, and they they stick to it that way for you know twenty twenty five, maybe even thirty years sometimes. Yeah, I agree and, with uh, you on that, and, and and sometimes you get guys who are appointed even under you know conservatives or Republicans like what happened with the last Bush that don't really, you know, they're, stand they're up for what they say they would when they get up, when they're going through their yeah. approval process. They're rhinos. Yeah. Republicans in name only for anyone who doesn't know what that means. Yes. You know, you know what? I, 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 I agree with that. The flip side of it is there's a, there's a reason why these guys got appointed for life because if they were getting switched out all the time, you know, this this would be even more complicated for us. I think if they were getting switched out all the time, we would have probably already lost a lot of rights, including the right to the Second Amendment. I know that sounds kind of bad yeah. now when, yeah. when you're looking at it from this point of view. But, for example, I mean, Anthony Kennedy, Justice Kennedy, is hinting that he, he may want to retire. Right, that's and I think, guy, yeah. yeah, I think he was appointed by Reagan. Um, I haven't pulled up to see, like, exactly how... You know he's been doing what he's doing, but if he gets replaced also by by Trump, I mean we've got a chance here that that you know freedom can reign for some time. The problem is if they had term if if we were able to to make these kinds of replacements and then there were term limits, it would get thrown out the window in a, in in a few years. So there could be real drastic changes from one way to the other. I mean it should go swing real hard. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm fine with the. Um, with them being appointed for life. I think, you know, the, the thing is, this is why we have to vote. You know, there's so many people when voting was coming along. Uh, first of all, let me make sure everyone here voted. Did you vote, Steve? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. What about you, Walter? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You voted. So did I. I voted. And, the, and so there were a lot of people that said to me, oh, you know what? I'm not going to vote. I don't have to waste my time voting. I get that. That's your right. If you, if, if you don't want to vote, Sure, I guess. Don't, don't complain then. Yeah, but don't complain later on. Yeah. But there's all, but this is one of the reasons, right? So one of the reasons, for example, why why I supported Trump and voted for him is, you know, Supreme Court appointments, and he's already made one, and that that one has already tried to stand up here for the Second Amendment, along with Justice Thomas, and it's the reason why we need to keep supporting him and keep getting, you know, uh, the right justices. On the Supreme Court, right? Ones that believe in the Second Amendment, you know. Ones that have some common sense, I guess we'll call it. Whatever, yeah, whatever guys who believe in the yeah. Constitution, oh, yeah. you know. Whatever common yeah. sense is. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much of that anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough thing. And, and I know that this is, you know, this is the reason why you've got so much uh, feedback and pushback against, against Trump right now out there. And it's just like every single day. Anywhere you look at the news, they're, they're like, you know, heavily load all the stories to the negative. But, you know, this is one of the things that that we need that needs to get done here. Right. The Supreme Court needs to take up some Second Amendment thing and say, yeah, you know, stop like states. Stop getting in the way of the Second Amendment. Yeah. Th there's some states rights issues, too. So, you know, you know, you know I, I guess, you know. I, that's kind of like concealed carry. There's some states' rights issues in that, too. Um, and not every state honors Florida's concealed carry like Florida does. you got to remember that, too. It's not, it's not across the board. They let you carry stuff, but they might not have the exact same rules. So, um, Yeah, and I think one of the reasons the states that, that don't want to honor the reciprocity with Florida, they come up with the same argument that you see here in New York, Nevada made that argu argument for a little while, but now they do reciprocate with Florida that, well, oh, Florida is too easy. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what is too easy, you know, when... Uh... To, to a lot of these guys, giving 
giving people a CCW is too easy. It doesn't matter what you do. In their minds, like, you know, if you background check people, if you make them get training, you know, what no matter what no matter what you do, it's too easy. Okay? You know, you're talking about you, you, these people who we're dealing with here. Yeah, you know. So when when you're talk like look, this goes back to the same thing with uh, New York and what this district attorney said. That these these guys think it's too easy for you to be able to protect yourself. Well, I tell you what, let him come to Florida for a couple of years. Just live with, amongst the amongst the podunk, you know, out and out with the uh, with the with the Billy Joes, you know, and the, and the local people, yeah. and you'll find it. Yeah, Probably. I mean, basically, what these guys are looking for is like a police state. It's the same thing with California. What I mean, Cal, look at Cal, California is like killing the rest of the country, man. You know, bringing I, it down until we get Puerto Rico to become a state. Oh my God, no. California is like <laughs> no, nothing against any Puerto Rican people listening, but hmm. oh, what a what a mess Puerto Rico is. <laughs> um, and that's well, I mean, the, one of the reasons. Well. To, you know, Puerto Rico not too long ago wanted to be completely independent and have its sovereignty. And then they realized, wait a second, if we we're got no money, yeah, no if money. we're totally independent now, yeah. you know, and it's a terrible thing because it's a beautiful place and it has a, a huge potential, but you know, it's completely mismanaged by Democrats, by the people who are there. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a confu confusing thing that goes on there. And ultimately people just want to be, you know, taken care of and, you know, they want the welfare state, right? So now their solution, instead of having their sovereignty, is just to become a state and then the rest of us will all absorb their their problems and their debt and all. And that's the same thing. That's exactly what's going on with California. Illinois. In yeah. The new, in, the, in the news, Illinois has been in the news every day about how they're insolvent. Um, and the reason they're insolvent is because of one place, Chicago. That's why they're insolvent. Um, yeah. So the rest of the state's going to pay a price. Yeah. And, and so part of that whole thing is to me, in my opinion, like, cause what's their alternative to this? So what's people, what's the alternative in California, right? When they take away the rights of the people who are hardworking, taxpaying citizens who, you know, are good guys and just want to be able to defend themselves. When they take away that right, what do they say? Like, what are they giving you in place is what I'm trying to say to you. And what they're giving you in place is the police state, uh, you know, as well as the nanny state. Those two things kind of go hand in hand. You know, they're like, okay, yeah. we're going to give you more cops and they're going to defend you. And I really just, you know, I I'll say it again. I don't have any problem. There's lots of, you know, I think there's lots of good cops out there, but I have a problem with but their, the their solution not, being. Their job is not to protect you. Their job is to enforce that's called law enforcement. Nothing, right. nothing gets protected until a crime's committed. Yeah, and then the, and, and another part of that is be there over, watching over you when the bad guys are hanging out. Yeah, but also we don't have a lot of good oversight. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, we don't yeah, have a lot of good oversight. I think there was, uh, uh, you know what? I have to look this up. But there was a case that someone sent to me um, today. I think it was in Texas where there was a young man that. Um, I think he he probably had some issues and his friends did call the police to help them out with this guy, but they handcuffed him and then they were tasering him in his testicles. They basically tortured him to death, right? And when he died, they hid, there was videotape of this and they hid it for so long until the statute of limitations ran out for them being charged. And then they, so they just recently released this tape where you can basically see them torturing this guy. This, so there's no, this there's no statute of limitations on murder, is there? Um, well, um, you yeah. know, the, that's the what family, I hate to say it, but that's what a rope's for. For guys yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. I would, I'd have hang them in the highest tree and then let their buddies cut them down in about three or four days. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing I'm saying to you is, you know, I've said it before, like, I don't think that all these things are the solution. You know, I don't think these are the solutions to our problems. I think we can, we can help with a big part of our security. I think when it comes to police departments, we need to train them better. We need to have better oversight. You know, they, they need to like, there needs to be a balance of what's going on here. Uh, in in terms of that. And the solution to me is not having more, if you go to New York city, it's, it's a police state. 
you know, especially New York City. The city itself is locked down with 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 police. You can get a ticket for every single thing that you do. You know, it's it's a little crazy there. And and uh, California is not far away from that. So a lot of these other places. So you have a police state and you have a nanny state. And the the only people that benefit inside of like the nanny state kind of system that they want as well as the people who don't do anything, who don't have businesses, who don't work, who don't pay taxes. That's politicians. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and those people don't follow the laws either. So they also don't feel safe. This is, well, this is the truth. Make, There's no one that feels safe and they also, but they don't follow the laws. They make a separate set of laws for themselves. Just like healthcare for the congressmen and the senators and all that stuff. They yeah. don't have, they don't have to abide by that crap. Yeah, I mean, it, se it seems like it seems like a simple thing, but what I don't know. I guess where I'm coming from it is that I think that if you reduce the size of government, if you if you leave it up to us to to defend and protect ourselves in most cases, if you stay the hell out of our way, right, right, exactly. Get out of my, you know, I didn't do anything bad, so I don't need to have any. A, a, I don't need to have you around. Yeah, if you get rid of all yeah. these crappy, you know, laws and complicated hoops that people have to jump through to make, you know, uh, for, for instance, California right now has, um, I think, July 1st, this thing in California goes into effect where you can't have what they call a high capacity magazine anymore. Have you guys seen that? Uh, probably, you know, yeah. yeah. So and the standard capacity magazine. Yeah, well, that's what what they call what they call a high capacity magazine. And the funny thing about that is that there's a lot of there's a there are a lot of places in California where they're not even going to enforce that. Well, you know? oh well. And this is just some silly law that's just going. Once into again, if, if you live out in the middle of nowhere in California and you're a normal person and the people around you are normal people, you'll think normal. It's like this is dumb. So why would the sheriff bother himself enforcing something that's dumb? You know, yeah. he's, got, he's got enough to do as it is, you know? Yeah, um, so exactly. So, you know, um, we've got a comment from R. Hendry here. Lola's bringing me a comment. He says, state rights come before federal government, but individual rights are supposed to come before both. What do you guys think about that? Well, in theory, yes. In theory, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. But that's but, the thing that's supposed to balance it out because – What's the point of being the United States of America and you're, you, you feel safe and comfortable when you're in Florida, if you're in Texas, Georgia, a lot of these other good states. But then if you go to California, you don't feel safe. Or if you go to New York State, you don't feel safe. If you go to New Jersey or Connecticut, mm, I don't you know, know. What, is, what is the point of it? You know, and how, yeah. how come in Florida you're a good upright, you know, st um, you're a decent citizen or whatever you call it, you know, right. you're a stand up guy in, in Florida. <laughs> you're a good guy. Then you go to New York or you go to New Jersey and you're a bad guy. Well, you're not good enough. Your state isn't, you know, scrutinizing you right. enough in their opinion. That just isn't, you know, that just, it just depends on who signed a piece of paper. Yeah. And okay. I think it depends on the people who are there trying to like stuff <coughs> lies down other people's throats. I think people yeah. in these states, there's lots of people. I lived in New Jersey as well. You know, we left New York going to New Jersey <coughs> thinking it was going to get somehow better. And it was <clears throat> tremendously worse <laughs> in Jersey's New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's people in these states that want to protect themselves. And not just in the good neighborhoods, you know, there's people who are living right. in the bad neighborhoods and they don't have a lot of choice. They've got to live there and figure right. out how to work their way out of that. And meanwhile, sure. on the way back from work or going to work, they're getting held up. They're getting harassed. Yeah. 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 You know, they're afraid of, of being robbed. You know, their, their children are scared to go to school and all this kind of stuff. And once again, and, it's, it's not law enforcement's job to stand over and be a they, they can't do anything until something happens. You know, nine, nine times out of 10, they can't. Um, and they can't, they can't put the strong arm in those places because that kind of stuff went away a long time ago when there was order in the neighborhood, so to speak. Uh, right. When the, when the cops were a little more, um, we'll say aggressive, um, <laughs> old school policing where they walked down the street with a billy club. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just to, if you want to if, if you want to do an experiment, if you're in one of these states and you don't like you're not really sure what freedom is and you want to do an experiment, talk to your friends that have moved out of the state. 
to, that have moved out of New York, moved out of New Jersey or Connecticut. Connecticut is also suffering big time, by out the of, way. Out of the cities in those, in those states. Yeah, they've moved out of those cities and gone to other places where it's easier. Yes, it's true, it's easier. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing that it's easier to defend and protect yourself. And when you talk to those guys, how many of them actually regret? I'm never going back to live in New York City. It's, I don't even want to go back and visit my family that's there, to be honest with you. It's easier to tag your car. It's easier to get a driver's license. It's easier to go to the grocery, probably cheaper. Um, yeah. It's, of, cheaper not, to not, buy, it's cheaper to buy, to own your own home. Not know, just firearms. Everything is, everything is easier when you get away from those places. Absolutely. Yep. It's easier to start a business. It's easier right. to get licensed. It's, the taxes know. are less um, most, most of the time. Um, so it's, yeah, it's not just firearms. It's life in general is easier. So... Yeah. And so what's happening in these places is you have like some of the elite of our society, you know, the actors and entertainers and stuff like that, or people who are super incredibly wealthy. And then at the same time, very liberal that that still live in these places and they feel they feel fine. They feel safe. And then you have some people who, I guess, just cannot get out of there. And then you have the rest of us that are leaving. And going to other places. And when we find freedom, like which of us finds freedom and then goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to go back to I'm New York City. <laughs> I'm, going back to the, I'm, I'm going back to the hell hole. Let's go back. Come yeah. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's very few. I'm not saying there's no one. I think that there are some people who are that crazy. But then on the flip side of that, if you talk to people in New York City, they feel like that's the center of the world. You know, they feel uh, like they, they – I, I, I know people. I know, who, I know somebody that – my. My brother-in-law loves New York City because it's New York City. You know, it's there's the food. I can handle the traffic. The stuff. <laughs> but, that's horrible. Um, you know, that's I, – I, you know, it would be like, hey, let's go to Moscow. I love Moscow. You know, I mean, okay, I like to see it, but, you know, I don't think I'd want to live there. It's, a, it's another shithole too, so <laughs> – <laughs> Don't mince your words. Don't mince your words. I, I'm not going to. I mean, it is. I mean, crime-wise, and everything, it's a major city run by a bunch of bureaucrats. So unlike New York City and Chicago and New Orleans, and um, when New Orleans is, there's nothing going to be do for New Orleans. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah, but. but a lot of these places are getting worse and worse. I mean, if Connecticut, for example, I think is a is a good example of that. Um, yeah. You know, I was even talking to folks when we were on vacation in Missouri that were from those areas, and they're like, yeah, man, we're trying to get the hell out of Yeah, but the bad, the bad part I don't like is they come to Florida, these people from up north, and they decide yeah. that they want to make Florida like New York, you know, and, and if, I, we don't need you. I mean, you can pay your taxes and leave your, you know, leave your money here and then go back up north, but you don't come to Florida to live like you live in New York. Um, right. Sorry. I well, don't I know. I mean, I agree with you. I came from New York, and I came for a reason. And the reason why I haven't gone back is because I found what I came for, and I don't want to. I don't want to change it. I would leave Florida if it was more. If it became more like New York, so you know, I wouldn't be interested in living here. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, there's a lot of really beautiful places all over the country, but you know, when, I, some of these places you just can't. You can't breathe without somebody trying to tell you what to do. So. Mm -hmm not my way to do things mm -hmm. so. and not that I'm doing anything bad or I'm like crazy, but I just don't want to be messing with my stuff or trying to tell me what to do. It's a live and let live thing, you know? Right. Um, no, we just want freedom. I think that, you know, we get, we get pigeonholed or pinned down or put in a box um, <laughs> of like, oh, these guys are just, you know, they, who was it that said we just stick to our, to our Bible uh, uh, yeah. and our yeah. guns? Guns in our, in our religion or whatever, yeah. Yeah. And the, the truth of the matter is, is that we just want to be free. And it's, you know, these things are important to us because they are connected to freedom. I, I, don't, I don't go to church every Sunday, but I'm not going to tell you you can't. If you want to go every Sunday and you want to do all that stuff, that keeps your boat upright, then then go. But don't tell me I got to go or I'm a bad person or whatever, you know, or that, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I, so.
That's well, what I, was, what, I was, what I meant by what I was yeah, saying no. is that people put us in a box and they don't realize that we're, we're not really in one particular box. We're all over the place. We're lots of different people. You yeah. have lots of different people that find it easier to live in Florida, for, ex for example, versus like San Francisco. So oh. you, you, you find that even there's like gay couples <laughs> that are married that would rather live in Florida over San Francisco because, <laughs> you know, even though there's all these high like minimum wages and this thing and that thing, it's very difficult, very expensive to live yeah. there. And you don't have freedom. You don't have your rights. But right, you, can, yeah. you can come to Florida and you can be who, you, you know, people for the most part are leaving you alone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once again, don't, don't tell me what to do and I won't tell you what to do and everybody gets along fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really all we want. But the thing is, is that if, if we're, if, if we're this, like this, we're, we're this country and, you know, we're all paying no matter what we are all paying federal taxes. Well, yeah. Well, why, let me ask A you, lot. why, why do, you're, you're, you're a more recent um, arrival than I'll ever be. Mm -hmm. Why do people come here? They come here to get away from all that crap all over the world. People telling them how to live and, and what they can't do and what they can do and who they got to, whose church they got to go to and all that. That's why people started this country. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, my family came here for freedom. I think that what, okay, so what happens with like, it depends on how old you are when you come here, right? Um, so everyone comes to America for freedom. That's really, that's just the bottom, the bottom line. line. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why everyone wants to be here. But then you have some older people that come here, like in my parents included, that they're so old and programmed. You know that saying, it's difficult to teach an old dog new tricks. Right. So the programming inside of their brain that was done by, for example, with my parents in Guyana, which is like a socialist, communist country, Right. That programming, it's very hard for them to override. So there's lots of things that they don't understand. And so they're not, I'm going to say that they're not as free or they don't look at freedom the way that I, that I do. Now, I, I was born in Guyana. I left there when I was five. I lived all over the world and came to America when I was 11 years old. So for me, I, I, I'm happy that they made that sacrifice and they came here. But I enjoy more freedom than they do. Right. Right. Now the, the problem then, so, so I think like my particular, like my generation probably, you know, you appreciate it more and you understand all these freedoms that you have and stuff like that. And that's why you get into it. The danger is then always my kids and your kids and everyone's kids. So even no matter if you came from outside of America or you were born here, your kids might not be aware of how free they are unless you show them. How bad it could be somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. But also, you, you, you want to show them things because I know with my kids, that's one of the problems I had when they were going to school and the teachers trying to program them the other way. And then I show them certain things like guns and stuff like that. And then when they hear their, their teachers talking bad about it, like, well, I don't understand why they want to take guns away from people. I remember one time my kids said that when they were watching a speech with Obama and they're like, why, why are the guns so horrible? Well, because th there are some bad people who do bad things with these guns, but for the most part, there's so many guns out there and so many of us that are gun owners and we don't do anything to hurt people. We're actually good people. We help people and we're, we're kind and giving. Yeah, you know. I give you lots of ammo. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah um, we, we love you for that, you got, Walter. <laughs> all you got to do is just run the, run the numbers with the numbers of guns that are used in violent crime and numbers of kitchen knives and baseball bats and all this other stuff. And the facts will speak for themselves. It's not, yeah, people get shot every day, but people get beat to death every day. People get drowned every day. Look at how many kids in Florida drowned every year. As soon as summer comes, they start drowning in pools and it's oh, yeah. terrible. Yeah. So. There's a, you know, look, if you look at what's going on in England right now with, I mean, in London specifically, well, no, actually it's not just London that's been victims, you know, it's all over England yeah. that they've, you know, and all over Europe for that matter. But in England, they're considering giving the regular beat cops guns back. Oh my. Wow. You know, oh, oh I mean, there, yeah. there, you know, there's, there's um, some news articles about that. Well, That's maybe you can, you, can, you can put the dogs down a little faster when, when the stuff starts to happen. You know, you have to, I hate to say it, you have to put them out of their... <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the, that's the easiest way to fight back. I mean, if you're one cop and you're out there and there's like several guys, Done. What, you know, what can you do if there's several, you know, like if these guys are really worried about ISIS and terrorists and stuff like that, 
you know, that's that's where this comes into play. But now, if England is seriously considering that, the danger that they're running, which I think it's a good thing, this is a good thing. They when might, they, the people might want their guns back. Oh, exactly. <laughs> There's already been talk of that. Some some politician guy said, well, maybe we should make it easier for civilians. And immediately he was like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, wow. it's like, of course. all my English friends all like guns. Well, um, what's the difference between a police officer and any other civilian? They're a civilian so far as I know. So, well, yeah, you'd think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, make, what makes it, what makes the, uh, or like, like, the, like the politicians have their own police over there. Yeah. Why is the politician better than Joe, uh, Joe from Liverpool. Yeah. yeah, and one of the one of the big things is when you have enthusiasts like us, in in um, in most cases, we're better trained because we're spending more time thinking about it. Uh, unfortunately, for and this is why I always say like there's just not enough training. They don't spend enough training for police officers, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you have you have quite a lot of police officers. I've come across them all. I come across them all the time that are actually anti-gun, don't like guns. You know, they don't want to have guns. They don't want anyone else to have guns. Well, you know, for that reason, you've got the enthusiast out there who knows more, understands more, you know, perhaps indulges in more training and is a better shot and all that kind of stuff than the guys who are out there. Look, when you have scenarios, we're talking about New York City and they're supposed to be safe with the police officers. And there was a, there was a thing a few years ago in, on Times Square where there was a guy with a knife and these police officers opened fire on him and, mm -hmm. and, oh, you know, yeah. and, and like hit a couple of, you know, yeah, they just were hitting people in times square. Yeah. And, that, that shouldn't happen. Right. But, but that's a lack of training. And right, it takes, it takes, uh, you got You got to set aside time and money to train properly. Yeah. You know, and yeah. And, a lot and, of and you can do that by, by stop hiring, like, you know, just stop hiring and spend that money instead of hiring to train the people who are there. But also you've got other, like what the point I'm trying to make about this is you've got other people in your civilian population, people who were maybe in the military before, maybe they were law enforcement before and they're retired. And, but then you have just enthusiasts and, and other pro gun people who are capable of securing some of these locations, like you see happening with schools, right? You see that there's some schools now that are actually training uh, volunteer teachers to defend those schools in case of a, uh, right. you know, an attack by some, you know, someone with guns. It makes the bad guys think twice. So, yeah, that, it's, that's helpful. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I think that I think it's a good thing if England, for example, goes towards um, arming the police again. And then if that leads to the regular everyone else going, yeah, well, why the hell? <laughs> why the hell can't we defend ourselves? I mean, you know, remember the times in England? There was well, you probably don't remember because you're obviously not like a thousand years old. <laughs> but there, there was a there was a time in England where every able bodied male had to to know how to use a bow and arrow. Remember right? that whole thing with the fingers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Those exactly. are fun. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, you can't have a bow and arrow probably in a lot of places in England, so not legally anyway. Oh, no. So. Yeah. Um, but, th but the reason for that was they were under attack. Right. Right? They were constantly under attack from the rest of the world. England by its nature is not a very big place. It's just a little tiny you know, tiny island, really. And so they were under attack by the rest of the world, and they were like, well, the only way we can defend against this is everyone's got to to step up. You know, right. it's, some, it's something like uh, you find in Israel, you know, everyone's got to right. join the military and spend their time in there. And, and people people carry constantly there, too. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, not, it's, it's not very rare to, it's not rare to find a woman walking around with a newsie. That's right. my, that's yeah. my I mean, I, you know, I know like everywhere has its different, you know, different laws and all that kind of stuff when it comes when it comes to guns. And I think I think it's the same thing in Israel, because I think there's some guns that we can have here. They can't have there or they have to get like a license for every for every specific gun that they get. But it's not it's not impossible. No, no, I just I don't know if you just saw it. The European Union's trying to make um, the Czech Republic follow their their gun grabbing scheme mm -hmm. and the Czechs are resisting because they like to have their guns. And, um, you know, that's the, there, there's been putting pressure on them, probably, probably trying to pull the money out or something, or there's some, mm -hmm. it's usually always about the dollar or the, or the Euro or something. 
but they're fighting it and that's good you know yeah yeah because they're also fighting the, the the um to push the to put all these um terrorist immigrants in all these countries and the czech said yeah we're not doing it like the poles no we're not doing it so good for those people well and and one of the things here you know one of the biggest problems i think that you have with that is when you have a huge in, like people are leaving their country in in massive amounts like this and going to other places you i mean you you kind of touched on this earlier how is that going to make those other places that they're going to better i know it sounds cruel but the, but the first thing you should do is fix the place where you are so for example with america if america got really bad and we got into some kind of civil war and we're, we're, if we're all trying to go to some they're not even going to take us man <laughs> you won't even be able to get into mexico okay let me tell you right now there's mexico. no wall you just walk right in yeah okay ah <laughs> uh, yeah wait till you see what happens in mexico my friend yeah yeah <laughs> like people don't realize that all these things that people say you know you don't have the same rights that you do in america mexico you know healthcare is not the same there's a whole bunch of things that yeah. are completely different in mexico and yeah. if things ever switched around and we were trying to get into mexico i guarantee you they'll put up some walls and they'll be up there with guns and they'll be shooting us down because exactly. they wouldn't, they wouldn't want us to come in. But, and and I think there would, there would be Americans who would be trying to do it. But like you just said, I think a lot of us, a lot of us gun guys, we'll be right here fighting it out, man. Because yeah. this That's is the last hope right here. If America goes down the drain, then there isn't freedom anywhere else yeah. in the world. It's all. I'm not gonna, there. I'm not gonna leave. I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna hoist a, hoist a flag and fight on. So, yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of what we're doing now. Yeah, we're just talking, but this is what we're doing. When we exercise our freedom, when we stand up for the Second Amendment, when we get mad about things like the Supreme Court refusing to take up this fight and, like, clarify what's going on here, well, we hear nonsense from these politicians where they say only ISIS would want uh, reciprocity. He's looking, for, he's looking for airtime, too. They know yeah. when they make these outrageous statements, they know they're going to get press time and air time and, and um, get out there and get their name out there. And that's all – the politician, the politician, it's all about – Yeah. Publicity. Look at me. Look at me. You know, whether I'm a fool or what. Look at, look at Nancy Pelosi and all the other ones. They say anything. They'll do anything to keep that sacred little position, which I don't know what's so great about it. But um, anyway, so – that's true. But I think you also have some people who don't need any more um, publicity. Like I saw Johnny Depp was uh, was suggesting that, you know, I think he said something like, when was the last time an actor assassinated the president? Yeah, 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 and yeah, then he said yeah. he was joking. No, that, I, there's, there's something seriously well, wrong. He said he's not an actor. He's just a liar. <laughs> That's what he said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you think about that, Steve? What do you think about when we're living in a country where someone like who's super mega famous, like Johnny Depp, I mean, he's beyond just like regular famous. Yeah. He's Jack, he's Jack I mean, Sparrow. Come on. <laughs> gar. Arr. Um, I understand, you know, you got your first amendment rights and everything, but there's, there should be a level when threatening, basically threatening the president. You know, there is. secret service, secret service should step in and, you know, do something about him. You got, you got Madonna threatening to blow up the white house. You know, yeah, uh, give, them 30, give them 30 days in the local county jail. See how they like that with, yeah, the, crack, with the crack, the crackheads and the, uh, and all that stuff going on. See how long they last. I mean, it seems to be, it seems to be the, the celebrities that are down spiraling are mm -hmm. the ones that are trying to come out against Trump just so they sound, so they sound, you know, pertinent in the, in the situation because just they're, so they, they, they makes them more famous. Yeah, they're getting that. They're getting that free airtime, I guess. I don't. Yeah, know. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but now where was Johnny Depp when he even said this? Let me look this up. Uh, he was he was overseas somewhere. Yeah. So you know. He wouldn't do that in America. <laughs> well, no, I, he probably would do it here in America. There's lots of them that have done things. You know, yeah. Kathy Griffin did what she did right here in America. But listen, we're talking about Johnny Depp. Do you guys remember that Johnny Depp was married to Amber Heard? You know, yeah, he beat her up or something. Or? Yeah, they, he recently got divorced. But before they got, they, they were married for like, I don't know, six months or something. But <laughs> before they got divorced, he was finishing up this Pirates of the Caribbean movie in Australia. And they illegally took in two dogs. Oh, the dog, yeah. Yeah. 
So they took these dogs in because Australia has oh, yeah, all these yeah. problems with people bringing, you know, you have to bring livestock. You've got to go through the process. Quarantine. They gotta be in yeah. Quarantine. So, so Johnny Depp flies in on his private jet with these two dogs, doesn't go through the thing. Then when, when Australia says, we're going to take those dogs and euthanize them, <laughs> you know what he does? He gets on a plane and flies out. So he bailed out on his puppies, huh? No, he took, they took the puppies and they left Australia. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, so this is the thing. Like, do you think Johnny Depp would actually do 30 days? Even if we had that law, <laughs> he wasn't in America in the first no. place. And even if he was here, he would just get on a private plane. Yeah. Well, I just... and, he's, and he's talking crap. You know, uh, it's funny to me. Like, I see all these guys talking crap. And what they do is worse. Like, what Johnny Depp, if you've seen the video of him, um, Amber Heard had some video. Oh, of him okay. of him when he was drunk and he was carrying on and all that kind of stuff how are these guys any better how are these people any better they're not so is johnny depp any different when he's drunk or have we ever seen him sober Arr. uh <laughs> probably we probably haven't seen him sober in the yeah, last he's, he's years. always yeah <laughs> well yeah he's, i guess he's kind of known for that so um you know if the men in black show up one day when he's when he's at when he's in the, <laughs> when he's on the set doing his thing and they just haul them off, that'd work. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. I yeah. think the thing that probably would hurt some of these people is if you suspend their rights as Americans. You go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like this? We'll suspend it right now and see how you like that. Because okay. ultimately, a lot of these people, including um, uh, there's a lot of actors and stuff like that that are British, but they want to live here because the taxes and all that kind of yeah. stuff in these places are so high that this is why they, you know, they want to be in America, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, and then they don't they don't pay that much taxes, and then they're always complaining like, "Oh, like, these guys just want to keep cutting taxes for the for, for the poor people." Your, taking yeah. away your health care. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, yeah. at any time they could take all their tax money and just write it off. You know, yeah. at any time Johnny Depp can make that private jet available to everyone. Didn't he? He also was a big uh, France person too, wasn't he? He thought France was so wonderful. Or that, or I'm thinking somebody else. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could just yeah. put, you could put that hat on any. <laughs> yeah, they have that. Oh, that hat on anyone out there. Uh, Angelie Jolie and her. Yeah. Um. Eli says Johnny lives in France. I checked Google. Says he has a home in L.A., France, and the Bahamas. <laughs> well, that's also a tax haven too. You know. <laughs> and who knows that's where his convenient. dogs live? His dogs. That's probably. convenient because I have a house in each one of those too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You have Johnny's house, man. That's what we should do. Yeah. You yeah. know, if if you want to be if you want to be like that, okay. So if he lives in France, we all we all have a place in France and the Bahamas and it, we'll just and, stop and by. LA. You know? Yeah. If you really want to go in for this communism thing, you know, that's the thing. Like these guys are all trying to subject us to something that they're really not willing to I always, live under. I always find yeah. the funniest part to all these people who think that's so great, the socialism and the communism. They'd be the very first ones that would be rounded up and disappear. Yeah, it's the great ones, when they. The it's great with, for them the when they put on the, a. The ones with the big mouse are the first yeah. ones that are rounded up, and go for a ride at night and get a bullet in the head. That's yeah. the first ones that get dumped in a ditch. What? Yeah, they always yeah. take out the artists and the creative people and the. You know. They got the biggest. They got the biggest mouth. Yeah, that's why I believe in, in the Second Amendment because I'm an artist and I got a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> The second but, you know, I'm the broke. <laughs> yeah, but I'm broke. So I don't have bodyguards and lawyers and private yeah. jets that could fly me out of some place at a drop of, you know, <laughs> at an instant. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. You know, that's that's the way a lot of these guys. Uh, and they don't realize play. that they're, they, they're, they're, their freedoms would be gone in a second, you know. Um, but hey. Yeah, it's like, um, it, what if Dennis Rodman, what if the next time Dennis Rodman goes to North Korea, we refuse to allow him back? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, and so say, you know what, Dennis? Why don't you stay in North Korea, man? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so great there. <laughs> yeah. start, start, start your own basketball. He's probably got a room at the palace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd uh, be really short, though. Yeah, it'll be, you know, that's that's the thing. <laughs> So, all right, you know what? I think we've been, we've been going on on this for a while. I want to give you guys a chance to – Steve, so tell everyone out there about what you have going on, the folks who are watching right now, what you've got going on in your channel, what you get up to. Oh, man, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, we actually just went out the other day. We filmed about 10 videos, so we've got all kinds of stuff coming up. 
Um, more testing on the binary systems, uh, more muzzle brake reviews. Uh, I saw you just posted some uh, high point stuff. Yeah, that was pretty. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of amusing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a high tell point. I mean, it's, tell us about that. Tell us about the high point. Dude, video. It's a cheap pistol. It, it goes, goes pow when you pull the trigger. Yeah, it goes bang. Um, <laughs> it goes bang. It makes a great toilet gun. You know, you stick it up under the toilet. If somebody breaks in, you just pull it out. You know, but mm -hmm. that's about all it's good for. You know, it's uh. I don't see it as a valuable option for self-defense because they're not super reliable. Um, you can you can see that on the video if you watch the video. The magazine just falls out of the gun while we're shooting them. Mm -hmm. They're not the most reliable things in the world, but they're they're fairly accurate, and you can play with them at the range for a little while. And you know that's about all they're good for. But we ended up with two of them, so we decided to do a like a dually dual shooting video. <laughs> okay. Have you ever taken a high point and um, put some of these kits that exist out there on them? I'm just I interested. Have you haven't okay. Um, we've shot the uh, the nine millimeter carbine. We did a couple reviews on that long, probably about two years ago, and we mm -hmm. got rid of that thing. It was it was horrible. <laughs> okay, because I know there's lots of cool kits coming out. I was just wondering if the kits make them any better. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll be willing to try them though. <laughs> yeah, I think ultimately, if you can get the high point and you can get the kit, you should just probably get a better gun. Yeah, you just go buy Glock. Yeah. Buy buy a Glock, buy get yourself a, a nice AR. There's lots of uh, everyone's yeah. making a, a, a an AR lower now that you can use Glock magazine. So, yep, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty neat. That's one thing we got to build is a good good nine millimeter AR. We haven't yeah, gotten me too. To that yet. Um, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, me too. Walter and myself are supposed to be working on that, but don't tell anyone because I don't know when. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that, Walter? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that. Yeah. Not so, <laughs> yeah, we've we've got we've got to clear up a bunch of things and, and, and get that going. Okay, Walter, so before we um check out of here, what do you you know what got, what do you have going on you want folks to know about? So you don't have your you don't have your thing up, so for people who don't know, you're Walter Keller from Safety Harbor Fire. Yeah, I don't have my little thing on the bottom. Yeah, no. I guess, I guess I didn't turn it on. Yeah, so so oh. tell us oh, oh we're, now Fitty's oh. here. Oh, oh, 50s here. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be staying for a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> what's up? Sorry. No, that's cool. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you joined us. <laughs> you know, we were just signing off. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you heard any of the. No, that's cool, man. We'll we'll stay here for you know let you let you get it out. Did you hear any of the nonsense we begin getting into? No, I, no, I, I no. just heard laughing. And I was like, oh. okay, they're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. So we were basically talking about um, in, in New York City, there's a district attorney that said that he's talking about reciprocity uh, so far as CCWs, and he said only ISIS would want that. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that was our reaction, too. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> you know, his, his thing is that um, – it's so easy in these other states to get CCWs that ISIS would be so happy for us to get national reciprocity. What do you, what do you think about that? Let's just get your opinion on that one first. My opinion? Yeah. I think that's, that's kind of funny because each person that teaches a concealed carry class, you know, I guess – it's just like selling a gun, you know, you can get a feeling for the person who's taking the class or who's buying the gun and you don't necessarily have to sell them the class or the gun, you know, I just think it's kind of BS. Yeah, I, I you know, I, that's what we've been talking about. It's really crazy that, um, you know, they think that somehow it's too easy for us to get our hands on guns legally here in all the other states that we're in. And New York has it just right. Yeah. <laughs> I know plenty of people that have moved away from New York. <laughs> we, were, just so we were discussing that too. Yeah. 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 Have you ever been to New York City? Me? No. No? Okay. Do you have You're any desire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I you wanted, have a dis You want to go? Yeah. I'd, I'd like to go to New York sometime. Actually, you mentioned that. I've, I've been in New York a couple times. And every time I went, we didn't have any problems, but, but, you know, we didn't purposely go in places where there could be problems either. Um, I enjoyed my trips to New York. I mean, we went out in the city and saw the city and went to the different places. And um, that was all post 9-11. So I was there one time pre 9-11, but I was by myself then. Mm -hmm. 
But um, yeah, I mean, okay. I think I think people that visit New that's one of the problems that you have with New York City, like anywhere else. If you're visiting from somewhere else, you don't really you don't really know New York where you're going no. when you're visiting. <laughs> one one thing I came away you from know? New York I come away from New York was everything is work. Like I said before, it's work mm -hmm. to get groceries. It's work to find gas for your car. It's work to park your car if you have one. Mm -hmm. um, everything's work. So I, I yeah, but if you're, and if you're visiting, you don't see all of that because if you're visiting, you're highly unlikely to go to a bad neighborhood, be on the train at the wrong time. No, you I, know. I, I stay like I said, I stay with my sister in her nice, like Disney esque house in Forest Hills, in mm -hmm. the village, <laughs> with trees and birds and you know and raccoons and all that stuff, and um, it was like a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, but I could take you like I could take you five uh, uh, five to ten blocks away from that. Yeah. <laughs> place in Forest Hills. <laughs> that you're, yeah, you're talking yeah, about yeah. Forest Hill, Queens, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. in, in the village yeah. of Forest Hills. Yeah, because I know Queens pretty well. I know Forest Hills. I used to go to the movies there the, all the time. The streets are private in her, her neighborhood. Yeah, I know, I know. But you can go, you can go, I'm telling you, man. You oh, yeah. Go a couple of blocks in well, the wrong anywhere. direction. You can, do, you can do that anywhere, just about yeah. any major city. Go a few blocks and you're in the, the yeah. hood, so to speak. So. Yeah, and that's the dangerous thing about, um, you know, about a place. You really have to live there to see what it is that, that's going on. So the other thing, oh, actually, someone wanted to ask you this question, Walter. Someone out there wants to know, do you offer dealer pricing at Safety yes. Harbor Firearms? Go yes. Ahead. Just um, send us an FFL email, fax, an FFL, and, or a business license if you're not an FFL, because a lot of our stuff is non, uh, doesn't require an FFL. So, yes, we do. Oh, okay, and then also someone wants to know if that AR9 is a for a personal build or are we bringing one to the market, like a SHF Strange AR9. Um, I would love to do an, a nine millimeter carbine. I just have to. I got to get a few more things out of the way. Yeah, we so, got we yeah we we've we've got we've got some plans. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got ideas for. I, I I like the Glock Mag platform. I think it's cool. Um, and it's everywhere, so yeah, I, I would love to do one. So. Yeah. So the other thing that we were talking about, Derek, is um, the Supreme Court turns down case on carrying guns in public. So there was a, in California, they've made it more difficult to for people to carry guns, and uh, the whole thing went to the Supreme Court. The re Supreme Court refused to take up the case, and um, Justice Clarence Thomas and uh, Justice Gorsuch dissented and they said that the court's refusal to hear the case reflects a distressing trend the treatment of the second amendment as a disfavored right so basically what they're saying is that like every time something comes up with the second amendment where they can clarify it they defer it or punt it down the road you know if anything else comes up like first amendment they take that up which they should yeah. but the second amendment they don't want to take it up what do you think about that i think it's a shame I think it's pretty telling that uh, Gorsuch and uh, Thomas were the only two that descended on that. So, yeah, and that's kind of like the reason why it's uh, you know what we were saying in our um, little diatribe is that that's why it's important for people to vote, and you know the president gets to pick who goes on the Supreme Court, and uh, I think Justice Kennedy, it was that is is hinting at re retiring, yeah. and he gets to pick someone that goes in there again. And it's one of those cases where we want to make sure we get someone who's on our side in there. You know, yeah. you, like we could talk. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say it, it sucked that Scalia died, and uh, you know that was kind of under some yeah. weird, weird circumstances but, there. But it um, was also it was also good that the uh, Rebel, that the Republicans um, did what they did and delayed the uh, him Obama pointing another leftist. Yeah. Um, and what's yeah. funny is they, they, they got on the, the right for, for doing that, for stopping Obama from doing that, but then they did the same thing back in the day. I forget who the president was. Yeah. But it's okay if they do it, but it's not okay if, if right. the right does it. So. Yeah, that's how politics goes. Now, you were just hinting. Um, were you hinting at a conspiracy with Scalia? Well, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of funny uh, little – facts and tidbits of information around the Scalia death. I mean, 
Go they ahead, do, hit us they, with some of that. You know. They didn't do it. They didn't do an autopsy. Now, of course, they. they I thought it, I thought it was weird. I'm not. I'm not coming down on you. I thought that whole thing was too weird. <laughs> yeah, he went to a uh, he went to a, a private hunting ranch in Texas. Who the owner of that ranch was like a huge Obama supporter and funder for like his campaigns and everything. That makes no sense. Yeah. 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 And and um, the, he actually got an award by Obama for I don't know why. Probably because he gave money to run mm-hmm. but yeah that's the the first thing the second thing is they declared him dead over the phone no, another thing is uh i think some about hit, they were he was found with a pillow over his over his mouth or over his face yeah i mean and where was the secret service because uh these guys are supposed to have secret service details right i'm not sure yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they do have their own security yeah. force Okay, it's not the. Is it not yeah, the secret service? They, they they must have some type of uh, protection or security because mm-hmm. if uh, the other guy that got shot on the baseball field the other uh, the other week, if he had a special detachment of a few uh, capital police officers with him at all times, because he's the yeah. what was he the whip? Right, majority whip. Yeah. Yeah. If so, if the majority whip has. Yeah, I mean, if there security. ever was an, an Illuminati in America, it would be the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds like I know that sounds bad, but hey, Hank. Yeah, I'm gonna bail out. Okay, all right. We're but we're about to we're about to uh, go anyway. So we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll talk to you later, man. All right, excellent. Good seeing right. you guys. Thanks talk for joining later, us. Walter. All, all right. right. Yeah, I can tell Walter's about to go. He's he's his food is involved right now. <laughs> yeah, you're still on, Walter. We can still hear you. Oh, there oh, he goes. There he okay. Goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that was a whole weird thing. I agree with you. That was kind of weird, you know, um, very opportune yeah. for the, for the left, a very opportune moment, you know, to go down there. So. And then Scalia was a big second island supporter. So. Yeah. Yep, definitely. A hit. Yeah. It's the, if that's the kind of, you know, th- there's a lot of weird things going on. I mean, I know some of it is like fake news. I don't know if you guys heard about this. This is, I'm just going to say this is totally fake news. It was this fake news article that they found some barrels on the Clinton property. Yes. I was going to um, ask you about that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They supposedly found these barrels with body parts uh, in the Clinton property up in Chappaqua, New York. There was a news thing, but it was completely fake. Really? Yeah, because there's guys, there's people who just make up these fake stories right. and put them out there, and people don't necessarily uh, double check. Yeah, their facts especially, and stuff like that. Especially with like uh, Facebook article posts, people will read the headline, and go, "Oh my God, let me repost yeah. that." Yeah, so this was a this was put out by a, um, a a website that does a lot of satire, just completely fake stuff. But there's there's um there are some internet news agencies that um. That actually ran with the story, so yeah. There you go. It's kind of, it's kind of like BuzzFeed doing the uh, running the uh, the Russian dossier on on Trump peeing on those uh, Russian prostitutes in the bed that <laughs> Obama slept in, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just and people Crazy. just go with it. Like the yeah. first thing you should do if you hear. How did you hear about this, Steve? Uh, I saw it on Facebook actually. It's funny, but a lot of people are getting their news directly from Facebook and from, yeah. if it's not from Facebook, they're watching like late night with John Oliver or some. Yeah. They're watching comedy, comedy and they think that's news. They take yeah. that for fact. Yeah. Dude, I saw that on there. I had to research a little bit more because I was like, that's way too fishy. Yeah. Anytime <laughs> anything like that comes up, please double check it because if it were real, yeah. you would be as bad as, you know, I mean, the Clintons are not that powerful that they can keep it from running in the regular news. Yeah. It would be, it would be running in the regular news. So, you know, not that I put it past yeah. people. For stuff, <laughs> you know. I'm pretty sure Hillary's capable of some, she, I'm sure she disappeared with some chicks, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in her time, but you know, that was totally fake. Let's just make that uh, plane. Okay, listen, we should probably get out of here. Derek, um, I don't know what your schedule looks like, but we should de- definitely get you to, you know, I'm going to be doing stuff later on in the week, so if you're available. Oh, definitely. Yeah, we can come back. If you hear about any news things that you want to talk about, either one of you guys, hit me up. We'll do. Okay. And yeah, we'll uh, come back. Go ahead. I'm working on your 904 intro, by the way. So. Sweet. Thank I've, you, sir. Uh, very I've, cool. Uh, so, yeah, I've like separated the, the logo from 
different you know, like I got uh, the Florida, I got the crosshairs, and I got I got some stuff in the works. So hopefully I'll be able to put it together. Sweet. Thank you very, very much. Very nice. Very nice. So do so you want to tell the folks out there real quick about, about yourself and what you're up to? Eric? Me? Yeah. Oh well, I have the channel Fifty Percent Tactical. Um, this Friday, I'm actually going to be uh, uploading a new video uh, on my precision rifle project that I'm doing. I was having some magazine and feeding issues, and I fixed the magazine issue. Still having the feeding issue, but I think I might have realized a fix from a person's comment on the trailer that I released not too long ago. So. Oh, cool. Okay, so. So someone made a comment that was actually helpful. <laughs> yeah, it, it, surprisingly. <laughs> no, it happens all the time. It happens all yeah. the time, even with me. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah. I don't even think he meant it. It's just he just commented something, and it like when I read it, it just like the light bulb blinked in my head. I'm like, oh my god, that could be it. So yeah, just, yeah. I mean, all kidding aside, there are like there's some good guys out there who you know who do sometimes help out in this whole thing. That's, that's really, I think the whole purpose of doing these, or it used to be right. The reason yeah. why we did these videos so that yeah. we could help each other, you know, mostly nowadays is people trolling or using it as yeah. a, a reason to attack you, but there is some good stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to end this guys. Thanks. Thanks for everyone out there. Who's watching. Um, make sure you check out 904 outdoors. Fitty, 50% 50 tactical. He spells it with a percent. <laughs> the percent symbol <laughs> yeah as well as safety harbor firearms i want to thank big daddy guns for allowing us the space here to use the studio they are a sponsor as well as Rand clp okay and andrew's custom leather i want to thank those guys and also i want to thank everyone that supports us on patreon we're on patreon slash hank strange you know do you guys have patreons i have one it's uh f-i-t-t-y underscore O E. Okay, there you go. So Fitty underscore O E. You have one, Steve? Not yet, right? Do not. Uh, okay. uh, I'm probably not even gonna get one. No. Ever. Just, I don't just, know. We'll see how expensive this YouTube thing gets. Yeah, okay. It's, <laughs> oh, getting, oh, it's it, getting a lot worse, I could tell you that. It's getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I'm I'm so in the red it's not even funny. Yeah, the, yeah same same here. I'm, yeah, we're we're all like everything's in a downturn now naturally anyway because of summertime everyone's going on a vacation. But that whole situation's definitely getting worse. I could tell anyone out there who's concerned, it's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so all right, I'm gonna end this guys. All right. Peace.